Hey guys, how's it going? Mega Gears here. So I picked up some Silver Sable issues, uh, two and nine, I believe. Um, it's Silver Sable and Wild Pack. I think that was the only actual ongoing solo series that she ever got, and that was back in 91, 92, or something like that. And this is an example of just how a female-led title doesn't have to be, you know, female-led titles can and should be awesome. They don't have to be, oh, guess what, we have a female-led title and this is being progressive. No, just just make a cool superhero, cool character. A Silver Sable really isn't a superhero, she's more of like a, she's an anti-hero, I guess. She, she's a mercenary, so take that how you will. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, it's it kind of feels like Red Hood and the Outlaws, if you ever check that out. It's just a really fun B-movie action film. It's not really deep, but it's it's fun, fun nonetheless. And it's one of those type of situations where Silver Sable is, she's, she's ruthless, man. She's really cutthroat. She's really to the point. She's, she's cold as ice. She's almost just to the point of just being a little rude, but it's, it's not like it's personal. She's just like, hey, I'm a businesswoman. I'm CEO of a, you know, a company of mercenaries. I don't really have time to uh, fool around and beat around the bush. Let's just address what we need to do. Get the job done. Get in. Get out. Get paid. <laughs> That's really how she is, and she kind of has to be that way because her group of, you know, the Wild Pack. One of the members is Sandman, who at this moment is more of an anti-hero, more of a good guy. Than anything, he's kind of the uh, I wouldn't say second in command, but the guy she goes to to like you know handle and keep everybody else in check when she's gone. Uh, so I guess that would kind of make her a second in command. And a couple other members, some of them are mercenaries, some of them are ex soldiers, ex marines, uh, some of them are assassins, and some of them are just completely like just off their rocker uh, ex cons, but are really good at their job, so she hired them. So in issue number two, it's pretty much this guy who is a televangelist who has an assassination attempt on him. That and Silver Sable gets hired to protect him. That's that's the whole issue. That's all it really is. Like I said, it's really simple. But simple doesn't mean boring. It's uh, actually pretty fun. The art's really good. Um, and I think this is an example of a character that there there could be a following for. Um, it's just one of those things, if you bring up Silver Sable, most people that don't read comics, unless they watch Spider-Man the Animated Series from the 90s, or uh, I guess that's pretty much it, or played maybe some of the Spider-Man video games like Ultimate Spider-Man or something like that, they more than likely won't know who that is. Um, she's really kind of a small, lesser known character in the Spider-Man mythos. But she could be really cool. Just because someone's a smaller character, I mean, doesn't mean they're unimportant. A lot of characters were a smaller unknown characters and are really popular now um, because the right writer and you know team came along to bolster that character. So this is why, um, if y'all noticed the thing with Sony where they're just kind of making Spider properties, Spider-Man properties that aren't really connected to Spider-Man because uh, the MCU's been using Peter Parker, a uh, young teenage Peter Parker Spider-Man, and Sony's trying to make a solo Venom movie. Uh, this and they, this was also supposed to be something they're working on. It was Silver Sable and Black Cat. Don't think that's really gonna work because most people, if you say Black Cat, the first thing they think is like, oh yeah, Catwoman, that's what you mean, right? Not, not Black Cat, you mean Catwoman, right? Uh, so, I don't really see what was the good idea of doing that, but that could be a really cool, you know, mini-series. Imagine having a Silver Sable and Black Cat book, right? And it could be like a five-issue mini-series. Black Cat could be trying to, uh, you know, do what she does best, be a thief, and steal some uh, really priceless jewelry or heirlooms. And Silver Sable could probably be, you know, security for some, you know, rich, wealthy billionaire aristocrat or whatever or ambassador and someone makes an attempt on his life and she has to find who the heck the dude is and she's hunting for the guy and on the way she sees black cats you know scrounging around through the place that she's like what the heck are you doing here 
and it could be one of those cool team up books where they're trying to find the guy who tried to hunt them down. Uh, Black Cat really doesn't care about the guy. She could just be, you know, hunting down those heirlooms, you know, those priceless jewels, and you can find out through her backstory that hey, it was a family heirloom, something that hold a lot of, you know, weight, uh, personal weight for her, uh, something that's, you know, something really personal and something she cares a lot about. Silver Sable, she's just in it for the money, and it could be like this cool buddy cop thing going on, um, and just a cool B movie action flick type coming. Because uh, Silver Sable is one of those characters, she plays better off of others. If it's in her own book, it might be a little boring because she's just so not a stick in the mud, but so straight laced and serious all the time. It could seem like she doesn't have a personality. But if she's written well, she could be the, you know, rough around the edges, um, cold as ice, but inside has, you know, a heart of gold. You know, those type of characters that you just kind of got to get close enough to know them. And you start to find that, you know, they do care and they do have feelings and, you know, that type of stuff. But um, if you cross them, <laughs> you know, you, you, better, you better go into hiding or something because they're coming after you. But yeah, if you have not... Um, read a Silver Sable book and you're interested in it, I would definitely say skip the Marvel Legacy title. I mean, if you want to read it, it really wasn't that great. Um, it was pretty mediocre at best. But uh, if you're interested into that 90s nostalgia, go ahead and uh, check out issue number one. I don't know why they don't have more than one issue of Silver Sable on Comixology. Um, but they only have the first issue, Silver Sable and the Wild Pack, on Comixology. I don't understand it. I think there was like 35 issues, but they only put issue one, and they haven't updated it since. But if you go to your comic book shop, I think it should be pretty easy to find them. They're not um, a really hard-to-find book compared to certain other titles. Um, like if you're looking for like John Byrne's Fantastic Four, I think you might have a harder time finding that um, in certain other books. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next.